Let's start with cool. Yeah, great. And I'm actually going to record myself a bit because I'm, I know that you said that uh, I have about maximum of 40 minutes, right? Well, we have like to allow for some discussion. Yeah. Yeah. I will do my best. Uh, but, but I think this will be, I think this will be all right. So yeah, so Niklas Humble, uh, or Niklas Humble, you, you can pronounce yeah. it how you want for me, like. <laughs> what do you prefer? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't really, I don't really mind. Uh, uh, I mean, like, when I'm at conferences, it's usually this, they start saying humble, and then I just go with it. Yeah. Because like after a while, you don't. It, it's not really necessary to repeat it. It's actually it's it's it's, it's, it's in Swedish. It's very hum humble. Of you. Yeah, yeah, I'm a humble person. You know, but if B gets to be Queen B, then yeah, get yeah, to be like, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So Queen B and and I'm humble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to do a kind of like brief presentation of myself, my research, and how that connects to to this project. Um. Well, I will start off. There we go. To say something about myself. Oh, oh, it's just uh, yeah. So, uh, is it something with the with the okay, screen yeah. here? I think it's with the, on the right hand. The the are you are you screen sharing that? No, it's it's Max. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm I'm screen sharing, but is, no, is it me or you that have to change something? Switch windows is to be yeah. Ah, uh, mouse. Yeah. Can you can you adjust it, mouse? Wow. Um, I think it's more like the general window. If you yeah. look at like the, the window menu That's bar. Nice. Exactly. If you go to the top, there's the menu there. Yeah. Oh, so it seems to be okay. But maybe maybe if you shrink it, if you hit the green, uh, if you push the mouse to the top. And maybe it's this part that has to kind of like... Yeah. Yeah, go in. If you took that left, green circle on the left. Uh, green circle. Yeah. When the mouse is at the top. If you go up, then it shows. Go all the way up yeah, there. Green yeah, there. Mm -hmm. Ah, no, then, no. Then, then it must be your screen sharing. Maybe, maybe try, to, try to. Yeah, maybe. Maybe try to restart the screen sharing. Yeah, let's start again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is freaky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there no. we go. Okay. Okay, nobody moved. <laughs> but did you fix it, Max? Well, yes, but yeah, I, I don't think I did anything. Okay, but that's good to know. Yeah. But I guess now you need to maximize the window. Yeah. Maximize the window. How do you call that in English? Do we do? Is it maximize? Yeah. Sounds like a superhero. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do I do anything? <laughs> no. So. Um, yeah, Nicholas. So right now, I'm an uh, assistant professor in computer science at the uh, University of Leiden. I'm also the a lot of titles there, but uh, also the research program coordinator. So it sounds fancier than it is. <laughs> so, but it's a research program in uh, in digitalization technologies, media, and learning. So this is kind of like one of the areas that the University of Leiden wants to to kind of grow in uh, in the research area. So I'm the coordinator for that, and I'm also a Pedagogical Development Consultant <laughs> at University of Yale as well. So that is 40% of, of my of my time is, is there. So I can try to, to support in uh, developing a uh, pedagogical, pedagogical environment there. So at the moment, I'm uh, responsible for the development of our, our what should we say, like our recommendations towards the generative AI. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that is, that is what I'm working on right now at, uh, at Yale. My background is that I have a PhD in computer and system science from uh, Nitsville University. And before that, I was a system developer. Mm -hmm. And before that, I was a teacher in Swedish and philosophy. So something quite different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I did kind of, I did a big, a big, a big shift there. In, in high school, what? In the gymnasium? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, in gymnasium. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, so I, I did that for a couple of years. And I wanted, wanted to do something else. I actually looked at mathematics for, for a while. But uh, then it was like... Uh, yeah, computers. Yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. And I kind of like developed, and then I did a PhD. In it. <laughs> so, yeah, so it was it was skip, but I I really liked it. So I really like programming. Uh, just for for fun, some people uh, think this is fine fine uh, uh, fun where you come from and where you traveled. Uh, some people don't really like it, so I go to it really fast. But I'm from uh, Dalarna, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, like months. <laughs> <laughs> 
So from a small town called Furedal, so if you like hockey, then most people in Sweden, I think, know about this uh, quite famous hockey school there. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I, this that's where I'm come from, where I'm from, and then I moved to to Edsbyn, where I did uh, go to gymnasium myself. Also, where I met my wife, but she wasn't my wife back then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and moved to Linköping and started there. So that that is where I started um, teacher teacher in Swedish and, and philosophy. Worked a couple of years also in Norrköping, then I moved to Gävle for the first time uh, and worked as a teacher and, and a bit uh, stuff like that. Then moved to Östersund where I studied uh, system development and did my PhD later. Oh, so no masters? Uh, yeah, yeah, Ma masters. Uh, actually, I have a masters in education. So I did my masters before I did, uh, before I was a system developer. Oh okay. Yeah. So yeah. So there's so to to become a PhD student uh, in in Östersund, Yeah. They had to kind of like check uh, that I, I that that I could be it. So I didn't have a master in system and uh, in system and computer science. Yeah. I had it in education, okay. but I had I have a lower degree in computer uh, in system development. Okay. Yeah. No, I understand the system. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So so yeah. So I did like um, I did some work in computer science, and then they had to. So I had my master. They had to check like, okay, so does this person is he can, can we come? I don't know what what you call it when you kind of like look if the credentials apply in a different subject. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly they, yeah. Yeah. So they they did a check on that. So it took some time, and then they came to the conclusion. Yeah, this is. This is fine, <laughs> and I got the PhD position. Yeah. yeah, but it, it was a bit of work there. But yeah, eventually, yeah, it did work out. So yeah, and the last step back to Yablan, uh, where I now work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a bit about me. Just something for fun. Uh, so th that is just my professional background. So what I like to do is I, I like reading. I have a background as a, as a Swedish teacher. Uh, I like running. We talked about that uh, during the lunch now. So I like this long distance running. I think that is really fun. <laughs> Cross country, right? Uh, what? Cross country? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All, all, all types of running. What? Yeah. It's not a marathon, right? Yeah, yeah, that's kind of running. Yeah. Oh, so you marathon, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, Coffee is a big part of my life. <laughs> I like coffee. And a typewriter. I'm not that much of a hipster, but I have a typewriter, actually. So, but I really like uh, really like uh, writing. So uh, when I was younger, I really wanted to be a fiction writer. Oh, yeah, didn't become that, but I write papers instead. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, yeah. I think I get to write, <laughs> and I get salary for it. So mm -hmm. yeah, so half halfway there. But uh, I mean, like, it's, it's not too late yet. I can still become a fiction writer, I guess. Do, do you still do? You, do you have a paper? No, I don't. No, no. <laughs> but uh, maybe I will. <laughs> It, it it depends on how much of a hipster I want to become. Right. But not yet. I don't have a typewriter yet. No. So um, teaching, this is mainly what I teach in higher education. So uh, programming courses, uh, mostly in, in Python, Java, and C Sharp. Mm -hmm. um, also some web programming. So yeah, that is the, the most frequent courses that I have. Interaction design is something I think is really, really, really fun. I really like uh, human-computer interaction. Yeah. Part. Research methodology and writing. Um, I had those courses as well, and uh, thesis work, so supervising and stuff like that. So you had me at methodology and writing and thesis work because there is a huge um, need for that. Ah, uh, nice. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, but I think yeah, that, that is. He's going to give the summer. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. In the spring, <laughs> next spring, yes. Yeah, but that's uh, I think uh, yeah, that, that that that's what people said both at Mitchell University and at Yale. Like, oh, good, good, you know this, take it. <laughs> But yeah, I think uh, methodology is really fun. Yeah, I have some research on that as well. I will get on that soon. And this is uh, maybe a terrible picture. Uh, I tried to kind of like summarize all the different kind of research that I do. So my research interest. Don't worry. The, yeah, I will have a much easier uh, picture after this. Mm. But I tried my best to kind of summarize what. So this is kind of like the first circle here. That, that is what I've done the most work in. These other ones is what I'm moving maybe more in towards. So just briefly, STEM and CS education. So science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and computer science education. So very much related to my PhD, my PhD thesis. Uh, artificial intelligence in education. And that is something that I worked on aside, uh, my PhD uh, project. Um, design and development. So I, I, build, I build educational games as part of my research. So uh, design science is a methodology that I really like. And CS games, how we can use games for 
hello, learning and stuff like that. Mostly learning program mm -hmm. uh, and research methodologies. Uh, I've done, uh, I've written some papers on that as well, mostly on uh, methods for analysis. And some of the things that I'm looking into moving into is uh, generative AI, of course, um, more of, of an industry focus. So, I mean, like when I did my PhD thesis, I had a lot of focus on, on the teachers. Mm -hmm. And now I'm maybe I'm, I'm looking more towards where my students at the uh, computer engineers, where, where they go into the workforce. So yeah, so the industry is kind of like a natural thing that I'm looking more into. Game design and interaction design, uh, also a bit of inclusive design that we have done a couple of papers and that, that is something that we're looking more into. Stealth assessment, I don't know if you, I don't know if that does that, no, that is not a concept that you use here maybe. Um, process mining or data mining, it's related to that, or educational data mining. So that is something also that I have a paper on uh, that is kind of like, uh, like if, if you, for example, have a game, and if you develop an educational game, then you can like, kind of build into it that you can collect data while, while someone is playing it. So that is mostly what it's about. So instead of asking people after they play the game, so what did you learn? You collect the data as they play and you see in the data if they learn. So that is something I've looked into. But that also think it's very very fun. Mm -hmm. and you like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, it's a, it's a jokingly, I would say it's a wonderful name. I mean, that's the assessment. Yeah. I mean, is, is that a term in the in the research yeah, literature? Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's see if I remember her name. I think it's um, I don't know. Um, I, I can get the name for you. Like, but, but 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 it's yeah, a term. yeah yeah. It's an Ooh. it's an American researcher oh, that's God. really really big in this. So yeah. So she's built games, educational games that kind of does exactly this. She the one with the TED talks. Uh, maybe, but I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, th this was a couple of years ago that that this uh, concept established, but she might have. Um, yeah, but she's a really good researcher, and um, she also did quite a good work on uh, compute computational thinking. She did some papers on that as well. Uh, and this is, I, I think, she's mostly into how how you use it for as a teacher. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, that's the, yeah, that's the dream, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I tend to use it maybe more for like a data collection for doing like. Papers, but I mean, I think this, the same rules apply to some extent. Yeah. So this is like, and of course, yeah, lifelong learning uh, and uh, professional development. Yeah. Also something that I've done somewhere. Yeah. And if you if uh, you want to kind of like make this a bit easier, <laughs> much fewer uh, symbols here. So this is actually something that. Uh, uh, Marcelo Milrad is a professor at uh, Linnaeus University, I think. Uh, he he did read my PhD thesis before my defense, and he kind of like took the on himself to summarize all my papers, and he also looked outside of what I did for my PhD thesis, and uh, and he asked me like, what kind of researcher are you? And I think at that moment I said that yeah, I'm I'm a researcher that is interested in programming and methodology. And he said, yeah, you could be, but it, it's quite obvious that you're actually a design researcher. Uh, so all, pretty much everything you do when you look at all my pages and how they connect to each other, I'm, I'm mostly interested in design. So for example, I start with identifying a, a problem or uh, and that can be like a, uh, an educational problem. It can be an interaction problem with some kind of software and everything. And I kind of like move towards finding a solution and evaluating and if necessary, iterate and go back. So that is usually how it works. So a lot of my papers connect to each other and build on the same ID or the same problem. So that is quite common. So I'm related to this, I really like design science. That is not only the only type of methodology I use, but um, I really like that. And I like to build things. I like to evaluate things and try to solve problems. And if you want to, you can, of course, interrupt me if you want to ask anything. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so this, the, the first and maybe the, the biggest part of my, my research background is on the STEM and, and computer science education. So I'm just going to mention, I think this is probably the, what's going to be most interesting, but I just mentioned it so you, so you know about it. So this was my PhD thesis. Uh, it was on uh, the integration of programming in secondary education. I did that from a teacher perspective. Uh, and I used affordances as uh, the main the main theory. So that is something from human computer interaction. So I kind of like brought that into it, um, which I think was really fun and a different way to, to do it because like I started with computational thinking, and I want to have something, I mean like a, a bit more human computer interaction into it. So I think this worked quite well. Uh, you can have the, the find the main findings that are on the on the right there, uh, and. 
What I think is most interesting for this project here is um, the methodology it's used. So could you maybe uh, explain yeah. a bit what you mean by affordances? Yeah, oh, of course, yeah. So affordances is a, is a theory. Uh, it, it's, I think it's, ba it's based in, uh, in psychology mm -hmm. and it's by, by a name called Gibson. Mm -hmm. uh, but it kind of like has developed into different, uh, different areas and the person that is mostly, I think, referenced when we talk about computer science is uh, Donald Norman. So it's it's a kind of like a big theory in in human computer interaction, and what it's mainly is about is uh, affordances is action possibilities. So it's everything that we can do with it, with it with an object, for example, something man made, mm -hmm. um, and when we when we interact with it and what what the action possibilities, we also have constraints. So there are some, some things to can't do about it that, that can't do with an object. So one kind of like famous example is that. Um, I mean, like a share, mm -hmm. uh, it affords. You heard, you heard yeah, it? yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a policy thing, so you can see it on a share, and that's what it invites you to do. But you could also kick it, uh -huh. but it's not really. So that is probably the difference between Gibson. The, the in the original, you, I mean, that's an affordance, but you can kick a share. But for Norman, it's not really uh, meaningful to kick a share. Mm -hmm. So uh, he talks more about the perceived affordances. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I like the differences between just how do you know the difference between a table and a chair? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, the, the, the chair is lower, yeah. the table is higher. If the if the table would be this low and the chairs would be this high, then this would be the this yeah, would be yeah, the yeah. chair and those yeah. would be the tables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understood. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So it's good, good question. I mean, like, yeah. no, but if this is taller, huh? Uh -huh. No, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, but affordance is a really, really. Uh, I think it's really a fun theory. It's really, really nice to use. And uh, I mean, some people. I, I think it has. To, uh, maybe, maybe you've heard of TAM, Technology Acceptance Model. Mm -hmm. No, no. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's been quite popular. I know that some people say that. I mean, like affordance has to some extent taken the place of of TAM in, in much. So it, it's it's quite widely used at, at the moment. Affordance. So many people are using it and. Before that, many people were using TAM. Uh, uh, quite how, similar. How did, but, you but, use, how did you use that from the teacher's perspective? Did, were you looking at curriculum or were you looking at? Yeah, um, yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a good point. I, I was looking at programming tools. Yeah, so I was looking at programming tools that teacher could use. And I was looking for, okay, so these different tools that we have, we have like, we can use Python, like a textual program, you can use Scratch or something else, like block programming and uh, unplugged programming and, mm -hmm. and all, so forth. And all these, all these tools have, have action possibilities and they have constraints. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to kind of like, yeah, build some kind of like framework model or anything that kind of like summarize, okay, so what can we use these tools for? So how can they support uh, learning or uh, education? And I mostly looked at mathematics and technology, those, those two subjects. Was it in secondary school, lower secondary and upper secondary? Mostly lower secondary school. But the, yeah, there were, in some studies, there were teachers from upper secondary school as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so the data collection method that I used was interviews, um, teachers from all over Sweden um, did that during, during the pandemic, so used Zoom, so that was a, a bit sad, but also a great opportunity to kind of like widen the scope. A focus group was on site, so I, I went to schools and met the teacher teams and kind of did focus group interviews with them, very, very fun. Um, Document studies, so look at teacher, like teacher made their, their lesson plans and stuff like that, uh, analyze that. Observations, I mean, looked how teachers worked. Uh, workshops, uh, was th this was related to, to the programming courses that we had for teachers. So, yeah. And analysis, mainly use these two methods, so kind of classic uh, qualitative uh, analysis methods. So content analysis and thematic analysis. Yeah. Is it okay to move on? Please. Yeah. 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 So here, yeah, something about artificial intelligence in education. So this is something that I've done quite, I, I, I've chosen two studies here uh, that I'm going to focus on. So first one uh, is in Discover Artificial Intelligence, is the journal called, yeah, Springer Journal. So what we did there is uh, a scoping review. It's a kind of a literature review. So we analyzed uh, 41 papers. So we did this actually before or maybe in the beginning of kind of this first recent hype wave <laughs> of the artificial intelligence. So this was right when we were talking about self-driving cars and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we managed to hit this <laughs> this article right before that. So it's been quite well cited. So that was really fun. Nice. But 
Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, if, if if we only can do it one one more time, that would be great. But it's so it's so difficult to predict. But yeah, we managed to to, to hit this quite quite good. So we use SWOT analysis. Some people don't really like to use this for our, for research uh, research uh, thing, but I mean, we tried it and we managed to get it to a journal. So that, still quite fine. So we use this kind of like a, as a as an analysis framework uh, to get like the strengths. Uh, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats of artificial intelligence in education. No generative AI, because this was we, we weren't really talking about that back then. Um, so yeah, and this was kind of like our main findings from that article. And then uh, with the, the release of ChatGPT, uh, we a lot of teachers got a bit of panic. <laughs> I would say they're around at the end of 2022. And I had just got my, my position at the University of Vienna. Mm -hmm. And all the colleagues there were kind of like, what are we going to do with this with this new tool and uh, how good it is at programming? Uh, so what we said there was that I had some background in like similar. So I said that I can lead some kind of like work here, some research work uh, for all the, the teachers, the computer science teachers. Mm -hmm. And there was this new, it's not really new, but new to me, a new, um, research methodology that I wanted to try. Uh, analytic autoethnography. I don't know if you heard about it. No, not, not that many has, I think, but it's quite common in sociology, I think. And it's it's um, the idea with this study was kind of like mimicking the idea of going into, <laughs> into a field like old school, old school researchers, going into a tribe and kind of like uh, being with them, experience and, and uh, kind of documenting what you see and what you, how you interact with them. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like a fun idea. And, I and I, my idea was that we are six researchers here now that is going to be part of this paper. What if we all kind of like take this mentality and go into and visit ChatGPT, <laughs> kind of like interact with it, document what we perceive, we try try our our programming courses on ChatGPT and see like what can it do, what can't it do, where, where do we get the problems? And we document everything and then they send everything to me and I analyze it and try to like finding okay what where are the weaknesses, where are the strains, where are the possibilities and so on. Oh, we... So the field diaries are of the researchers. One of them. The field diaries yes, so yeah. are of the research. Okay. Yeah, so we are, yeah, so we we are the yeah so we documented the field diaries. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so six researchers, six uh, field diaries. 82 interactions in total. So one interaction is one question, one answer yeah, from ChatGPT. And we documented that uh, both by text with our reflections and also by screen prints. And kind of like analyzed all of this with thematic analysis. And this is kind of like a summary of what we what we got to. So some some uh, themes about understanding ChatGPT, what it is and uh, what kind of like strengths and weaknesses it has, and also the potential consequences for uh, computer science education. Mm -hmm mainly focusing on uh, programming courses yeah so that's the kind of like the main focus of it yeah and also a really really fun paper a really fun study to do i really enjoyed it so i like to do new things and this was the first time for me so really really fun i didn't know you could do it with ChatGPT. that's a novel idea actually yeah <laughs> yeah and uh, and also i should just mention something about this and um, so this was a symposium that that we had uh, at the end of, of last year. So it's the symposium on on uh, AI opportunities and challenges. Sayuk, <laughs> very, very hard to pronounce it. So, and, the, and the kind of like the theme for it was education will never be the same again. Mm -hmm. Really fun symposium. It was for an international uh, audience. Uh, I think we were about 100 participants. So yeah, mm -hmm. really, really fun. And we are talking about doing it again. So and I've talked to Mats about this, and potentially it will be co-hosted by me, Sweden University and Uppsala University, mm -hmm. depending on where I am. <laughs> will it be so, online again? One of them. Online again. Yeah, we will do it online again. So what what I think was quite fun with this this symposium was that this time we connected it connected it to a special issue in a journal. Mm -hmm. So everyone that attended here, there was an abstract only. And they had the opportunity to kind of like develop this after the full paper and submit it to this special issue from Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah. Were you the editor? What? Were you the editor of the journal? No, I was. The, the editor was uh, Paul Griffiths. Okay. So he was one of, but I'm one of the reviewers. Okay. Yeah. 
this year we are not probably not going to do the same thing because this special issue is still running. So, but what we will have is a conference uh, that has been kind of like it, it's been we had it before, but it's been kind of like resting for a while. Uh, and that that conference has a proceedings uh, that is uh, indexed in Web of Science, Scopus, and Norwegian list. So if you want to do a full paper, you can do that for that that conference, and that will be later this year. So this will kind of like hopefully be around the summer, and then the conference will be October, November, December, somewhere around there. So the idea is kind of like the same thing. Instead of it, I know I know most people would rather have a journal, but it is the opportunity to kind of develop this abstract to a full paper for a conference instead. Of. So that's what we're looking for this year. But it's still at the ID stage. Yeah. And something about fierce games. Uh, if you are starting to get tired, uh, hopefully this will be more fun. <laughs> we, I, I think it's usually nice to take a little breather at the hour. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. And I will not, I will not continue for one hour. I promise you, this will be around. Ah, you know, people, the, people say I, that. I, 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 people I, say that. I've been trying to do No, but I, I, I promise you, I, we will make it. <laughs> So yeah, so something about, uh, so I, I make games, and I think this is really fun, and I'd like to do games as part of research. And and so this is one of my first games that I did, so it's called Escape with Python. So when I gathered all this data from oh. teachers on kind of like what challenges they kind of with kind of introducing programming to students in K-12, mostly in, in secondary school, and they were kind of like, yeah, they, they mentioned everything that is challenging, how to get them on board, um, the the problem with, with having enough time and stuff like that. Also, not particularly the concepts. Oh, so no. you weren't looking particularly at the concepts that were difficult for students to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. We did that as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but we we kind of like already had it uh, because like we had this kind of framework syllabus from the from the agency for education, mm -hmm. and that is kind of like that contains all the aspects that they. That they are going to teach in improvement. So we we knew but from the teacher which of these aspects that was difficult. Okay. Yeah. So what I did was I used this kind of like information and build a game, uh, a digital escape room game. So did, uh, escape rooms were very popular back mm -hmm. then. And I think to some extent they still are, but uh, it was really like a hype concept back then. So the idea was to do, do a digital escape room game uh, where you train computational thinking and mainly focusing on Python, the Python programming language, and focusing on for, for students. So the idea is that they go into a room and they have to solve a problem related to computational thinking or programming. And by kind of like using what they know, they kind of get out of the room. Uh, and we, we did this and tested it with, with K-12 students. So it was a good experience for me as well to not only collect data from teachers, but also from, from students. And um, mixed reviews. Some people li like this game uh, a lot. So this is open. So if you want to later, you can go in and play it. It's on the web. So you just ask me and I will provide you with a link. <laughs> so, but I mean, like it's still the first prototype. So there are some bugs and that is something that I think is usually a, a problem when, when we try to test games with, with young children. Um, they fit. Usually, the, the games is really fun, but kind of like explaining this is a prototype. There will be bugs. They don't really. They feel like, oh, this is a shit game. It's full of bugs. <laughs> then, yeah, I know. It's it's the prototype, and you kind of like so. Some people really liked it, and they could see the see see past this this kind of like first iteration, and some people could not get past it and give it really bad reviews. So. Um, but that's life. Were there any comments with respect to playing the game but not learning something? Because that's yeah. quite common. Yeah, okay. uh, I mean, uh, we have both. So what we what we mainly tested this game was was on the mechanics, graphics, and and one more. Um, yeah, one more about design there, and then we also uh, checked it for for um, yeah motivation. Yeah, yeah. And, and we also checked it for 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 perceived learning. We did not really do a pre and post test. Mm -hmm. That was actually something that we were talking about. If I had continued at Mid Sweden University, this was something that we were going to continue and do for a project, but then I kind of like did, did go to University of Yadla and I hadn't really had time to pick it up yet. So this is kind of like the first iteration of it. And um, I've also been part of a, a Erasmus Plus project uh, together with uh, Mid Sweden University, uh, Universidad Complutense Madrid, <laughs> etc. And uh, so these are two universities. 
I was part of this project officially the first year, my last year as a PhD student. Since then, I've still been part of it, but uh, as a unpaid uh, volunteer <laughs> participant. So I've still been part in helping out with the research, going to the project meetings, stuff like that. And Ingenious Knowledge is a, is a game studio uh, in uh, Germany that are really good and we really like working with them. We are going to continue working with them with another project. And this is a frame uh, of early picture from one of uh, the program games that we're doing there. So still promote coding in K-12, but in this case, we are especially looking at kind of making it interesting for girls, looking at some kind of like inclusive design. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this has been a really, really fun project and it, we just concluded it. So it's finished now. So now we're kind of like writing everything up, doing the last report. So re really fun project. And we have many, many plans, this kind of like group to kind of continue it. And so that's really fun. Uh, and if you want to look at it, we have the link there. And I can probably send you this, this slide afterwards. And um, this is something that I'm working on right now. So uh, right when uh, I was at the end of my PhD, uh, I did have plans to continue at Michigan University. Nothing really happened. It just University of Vienna, was, they kind of like took me before uh, Michigan University had the time to, to offer me a position. So. So not, not, no bad blood or anything, it sounds like that. Mm. But the plan was that I, I was I did apply for a, a, a smaller local project there. Uh, they call it a head project, so higher education and development project. And I did get it. And actually I, I, I needed to be employed at Minsk University to be able to have this project. But we managed to kind of solve it. So I, it's a two year project. Uh, we are ending it this year. And uh, we managed to solve it by having people from Minsk University that is part of this project and they employ me for like 5% or something like that, which allows me to kind of continue this project. So this is uh, concluding right now. And so this game is quite similar to this one, but instead the, the audience is higher education students. So students that are taking uh, programming courses. So still we are looking at computational thinking and kind of like trying to keep like the general aspects of programming. We don't want to focus it too much on like Java or C sharp, but it should be applicable to everyone. And what we've done so far is that we have done um, data collection from teachers, so programming teachers from uh, North, Middle and, and South Sweden. <laughs> so good spread. <laughs> uh, on, on, so their perception of what students have the most difficulties uh, learning in, in kind of the, the fundamental programming courses. And we have built like a low fi prototype. This is one image from, from one of those. And we have done some students test on it. So just like looking at, yeah, so do you understand it? Kind of like this cognitive work walkthrough, like, uh, or, or like a think aloud session, mm -hmm. something like that. So just kind of like finding out what do they, so what, how is the, the challenge level and stuff like that. Um, and th that part has been really good because uh, at the moment we are kind of looking at doing a whole different design. So it's it's not going to be anything close to this. <laughs> so that's a good thing. So what I'm trying to do right now is kind of like putting all this together and build a hi-fi prototype. So that is what I'm looking at right now. So, and it will be something similar to the last picture here. And um, yeah. <laughs> So I don't know if um, if you've seen anything about this, but uh, this is something that I've done quite recently. So what I wanted to do is like my my thesis. If you don't want to read it now, now you can play it if you want to. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I'm good to hear it. Uh, sometimes I don't know if people think it's cool, but I'm, I'm thinking it's cool. <laughs> no, but uh, at the end there, uh, when I was kind of like, I did my defense in January um, one year ago. And um, I kind of like, but, but, but like what everyone knows is that not that many people will read your thesis. Mm -hmm. it, it's bad, but it, that, that's usually how it is. There are exceptions, of course. I mean, like some people find ways around this. I've seen people do like a comic strip about their thesis mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Some maybe do an interpretive dance or some things. I don't really know how to do any of those. So, but I think, but yeah, I mean, like I know how to program. I, I know how to build games. So I was thinking, like, yeah, maybe I can do some kind of like visual novel style game. And the problem is that when you're kind of like a researcher and developer, uh, you have to be like a jack of all trades. You have to know a bit about design, and and I, I can't, I, I can't kind of like do these kind of graphics. Uh, I wish I could, but I can't. But I mean, like with all these 
AI tools coming out right now. I was, I was thinking that, yeah, but how about I try kind of like go extreme here? So I'm the programming programmer and AI, the AI system is the is the the narrator, the the designer, the, the music maker, everything. So I use these different kind of tools. And I, and I was thinking, similar to what I did before but with uh, analytical ethnography, I'm going to document everything and do a big paper on this later. So that is something that I'm going on right now, right now writing something about this process. Um, and I think it, it went quite quite well. So I did a, I did a game. Um, the AI did all right. Uh, I think I, I know quite well now what some of these two, what, what, where they are good and where they have challenges. And, Graphics, it, it, I mean, it, it can do it quite all right. Um, the the dialogue, uh, it's quite obvious what kind of dialogue it can make and where it really struggles. Mm -hmm. So, for example, making dialogue of my methodology section was like not really a good thing yeah. because like it's too many levels. It kind of mixes everything up. So, you think this thesis is about methodology, but it uses programming, so it mixes everything up. So yeah, so it, it gets problems when there are different kind of levels of information. We're we using ChatGPT for this. ChatGPT is one, was one of the tools, yeah. So ChatGPT, Bard, um, we are, I think I have a list of, of all the tools at the end of the game, but also um, being image creator, um, what's it called? Um, what, uh, what the music maker, what's that called? Uh, music bot or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, some, and, and many, many more. Uh, so yeah, so it kind of like I had to kind of like, yeah do some prompt engineering and kind of like uh, trying different tools because like some parts of one tool was better than some yeah. other parts. How, how long did it take? Um, yeah, it, it took like I mean like the the building of it one very intense month, maybe a bit less. Yeah, a lot of weekends, a lot of nights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After after I took my son to bed. I went straight to the computer and started programming. <laughs> yeah, but it was very fun. So yeah, so this is kind of like some some of the games. Yeah, are we on time? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, of course. Yes. So just yeah, something uh, related uh, that 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 I think could maybe be relevant to this. So this is what, what I mentioned before about stealth assessment. So this is kind of like one study that I did. I haven't used it so far in a game, but I'm really looking into it. But what I did was that I, I used this to kind of like to try to identify uh, computational thinking development in students uh, based on their programming solutions. Mm -hmm. So what I did was that I collected, and I mean, like at this, at this study, I had 54 uh, programming solutions. Uh, what I used an algorithm, so it, it could be uh, 1,000 if you want to. It, it doesn't really matter. So it, it's all, all automated. Um, so what I used is that I had these programming solutions and I kind of fed them into an algorithm that kind of like changed them up a bit and translated them to, to a format that a tool called SIT Disco can use. Have you heard of Disco? No. So it's a process mining tool. It's usually used to kind of like analyze the, the process made in an organization. So for example, I've, I've seen a lot of studies on call centers uh, using it. It's kind of like look at, okay, so at this point in time, an employee get this call and then they do this and they do this and then they solve the problem back here. Mm -hmm. So they kind of can, can see the process and you can use, use this for a thousand employees, mm -hmm. but you could also translate programming codes kind of like look for, okay, so how do the flow of a programming solution look like? Uh, so that is what I did in this study. And what I got out of it was this. Uh, and so this is kind of like, you can see it, how they start the code and where they finish. And then you can kind of like look for, this is all the solutions. So this is in the first programming solution and this is in the last. And it, you can't really see it there, but what you can see, and it's not really a surprise, people get better at programming. That is not a surprise. Mm -hmm. What is usually quite difficult to know is, okay, what do they struggle with? Or what do they get better at? So my my idea with this with this tool is that by doing it like this, you can kind of like go away from, you know, like when you're a teacher, you can usually say like, you have a, let's say you have a hundred students and you kind of, you feel that most of them have problems with decorating methods or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's just a feeling mm -hmm. because like, you can really, of course, you could count all the all the problems, but with this you get kind of like a 
we can get some statistics. So most of you do this after you do this, and that is a problem. So with this, you can see like, yeah, 54 of 100 does this, and this is not what you want to do after you have done this. So yeah, and I think this is, this is something that could be used in a lot of different applications. So yeah, I think this was, for me, it was really interesting. And I haven't really seen anyone do it like this uh, before, so. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, nice. That's <laughs> really good. But then it's just not, not then it's just, just not the feeling. It's, it's you, a bit connected oh. to your time and task thing. Yeah, no, this is this is super cool. Are you looking at log data? Yeah, well, yeah. So you, you have all of the edits, all of the program runs, all of the no. errors, all of the source code. You could you could do that. But what I did You're just looking at the source code. Uh, yeah, I'm just yeah. using yeah, so what I did was that is what I did. So I, I have the like the coding document. And I, when I put it into the algorithm, it's kind of like translated to to like something similar to like a but it's long, long it, but it's the history. No, I don't have access to that. No. Oh, it's just the final. Yeah, yeah. it's only just the final. So if you have that as well, then then uh, then you can do a lot of more. But how do you do this with just the final? Uh, well, well, so this is done on on Python. Yeah. Yeah. So in in this case, so then we have like the program solution. So so in this course, they're, they're doing like what do you call it like. Uh, you can go just from the beginning to the end. So the first thing they do is, is at the top of the document. But that is, this works in this kind of course. But if this would not work in, let, let's say, C Sharp or Java, if you do it like object oriented, then this kind of like, this algorithm would not work. Mm -hmm. Then we kind of like have to, to do it a different way. So I think this, uh, doing it with source, with source code is, is a good idea. I, I, I don't understand exactly, but I'd really like to. Yeah, we can talk more about it later. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> And just something, just mentioned, I don't have to go deep into it, but it, it could potentially be interesting. So I've been, done some work on computational ethics. So this is like um, the idea here, and this was also before the release of the uh, ChatGPT and the talk about generative AI, but I think this is probably more interesting now than it was before. So what, what I was looking at here was, is it possible to build in like a decision support system, for example, in AI that can act like a like a moral system? Um, and what, I mean, this is related to the whole hype about self-driving cars. So uh, not only like telling it specifically, how do you act in this kind of situation? Like we rather, can we build like a computational moral <laughs> into, the, into the machine? Exactly, yeah, exactly, the trolley problem. Yeah, exactly, yeah, it, it's about that, yeah. So what we did here was I have this algorithm ready, uh, but we didn't really get, we haven't got the time to uh, implement it and try it out yet. Um, but what we base it on is uh, um, a subcategory to consequentialism called rule consequentialism. So that is something that kind of works very well to kind of like program. And what is good about it is that you can implement a uh, prevent disaster protocol into the code. And that is something that is part of this theory. So they have they task it like, like this. So follow the best consequences, except when you have to prevent the disaster, and then kind of kind of like hard code that into the system. Uh, so yeah, so also a very fun, very fun paper. Um, at least I think so. Yeah. yeah. And this is something that I think is really interesting. Let's put it in here. So digital humanities. Um, this is something that. Yeah, I've, I've been talking to, to a lot of people a lot for a long time, and we haven't really got, got into it. But uh, I mean, like, there are some people around this when they're doing these kind of programming courses for the humanities. And I think that is a great initiative. And uh, I think this is that is probably where we're going to have to go sooner or later. And I, and I think this is also related to like AI for humanities. Uh, more people than technology students will have to learn this. And something that I've done in this uh, was this <laughs> very old project, Grammatik Lexan. So it's a it's a word a play on words. So Grammatik Lexan. So grammar uh, oh, homework. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what I did here was that I kind of programmed this environment where you can auto generate the grammar tests for Swedish as a secondary language uh, indefinitely. <laughs> so. You can do, and, and this does not really feel any point nowadays when, well, you, yeah. have, when you have chat. This was before chat GPT. <laughs> so this was more impressive before chat GPT. <laughs> I, I was going to say you have four, uh, four, four participants. Well, we need to try. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, this was quite popular because I, I did publish it, and a lot of teachers did use it. 
So it was at the at, at the point that it used the the the, the web server crash a couple of times mm, uh, sure. because like I mean like you could I mean a problem is usually when you have this kind of grammar grammar test you have a class with let's say thirty students and they all have to say the same the thing, right? yeah but here you can one one well yeah not maybe not one second because it was quite a low, slow server but five seconds then you can print like one hundred unique grammar tests. Mm. Uh, so it it was quite. I mean, a lot of pe people used it, but um, yeah, I had to. After a couple of years, I had to pay to keep it up, and yeah, I didn't want to, so I, I had to shut it down. <laughs> and also so now we have super cool. Tea, so. well, that's super cool. Oh, thank you, thank you. And I, I think it's the exact same structure with um, programming problems as well. Yeah. When you give programming problems, yeah, yeah exactly. You yeah. have you know ten exercises. One student does yeah. it. Everybody turns in the same thing. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So yeah, so I mean, yeah, of course, yeah. So this is on, on grammar. You could change this to do anything. It could be kings in Sweden or whatever you want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So moving into the project, uh, maybe so, we can take a break. Yeah, should we take a break? Let's take a little. Yeah. Bit. If it's okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah. So. These few slides will go much faster, I think. But still, we've been talking about this when we went for coffee. That I mean, like, I, li I like that you interrupt me. So as long as that's okay, but Matt, you can maybe you can look at Matt if it's okay. Matt is worst. Matt is really good at this. We used to have the. People coming, and if they got past the second slide, they were pretty good. Oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah. we kind of decided to be a bit more <laughs> listening. Okay. Yeah. Civilized. But, yeah. So, now this is the second hour, so it's the. We have yeah, 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 right. yeah. But that's, uh, that's probably good because, the, right, the slides that I have left now, it's kind of like connecting what I've already talked about to like my some ideas for this project. And of course, this is just like. Ideas. This is kind of what I thought about when I kind of read about read about this poster position. So open for suggestions still. But so what I what I was thinking about when I saw this. So there are like three main areas. So the first one that is kind of like described is uh, analyze how generative AI is used uh, and influence people in the IT industry. So when I read this, the first thing that first thing that I thought about was kind of like a big case study, and because like I think something that is what I think is probably quite similar here to like the, the problem that I had when I did my PhD thesis on teachers' perceptions on integrated programming is the problem of access. So, I mean, like you want to get into the to, into the companies and see how they work, but you that would be really difficult. But what you can try to do is kind of like find these people that are very, very interesting and do interest with them. So that is something that I've actually already started. So I have started collecting people that are working in the IT industry that are really interested in, in generative AI that want to participate in an interview with me. So my idea is kind of like starting with this, doing an interview, interview study could be a, a publication in its own, but uh, yeah. And then from them, getting access to the coworkers, uh, doing focus group as a second step. Uh, and then you're getting closer at getting access. And then when you, <laughs> when you kind of like, are at the level of doing focus groups, then you already have one foot into the company. And then hopefully, I mean, I, I put observations in kind of like, like this, because like that is a bit, um, yeah, that's hoping for much, getting access, just going around and doing an observation. But something maybe simple, maybe you can get access and do a workshop or something like that, something more interactive. So that is kind of like one idea what I was thinking, how this part is that could be conducted, like a big case study. Uh, yeah. So, but just a comment though. Yeah. I think this is really good. And I think this is also kind of what we would like to have. Yeah. But we, in the proposal, yeah. stopped at the interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, you, it's hard to make promises when you yeah, yeah. are dealing with. Yeah, but it, I mean, so I think one could see the proposal as the kind of the base level. Base level. Mm. And of course, if you can do things like that, yeah. it will of course it will fit, will fit, and it will be good yeah. for the project. But uh, the line of where we are promising is more like that the interview. Yeah, yeah. we made it one slide in. Okay. Yeah, I said that's much worse. So, so, 
So, uh, so uh, sorry. So the the proposal that you got funding for 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 yes. So that is is that a generative AI in industry or? No, this is one third of it. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. I have one slide for each each third. Okay. Yeah. So, so, oh, okay. So I thought you were talking about the project you have started already in in, no. in Java. No, so this this is my kind of like ID suggested for oh, how we can do this project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah nice, nice. Yeah, yeah I have maybe I misunderstood, yeah. but I have a question on uh, timeline because one yeah. of the challenges I feel a postdoc is is that it's a very short time. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a long time, but it's a very yeah. short time. Yeah. Um, so have you thought about how you're going to, because it's yeah, yeah. three different things and how you, it's, yeah. it's like, I, I, have, I have one slide about it, oh, but sure. yeah, but it's very ambitious. I know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's good. Yeah. But I think that is kind of like, I'm, I'm trying to think all of them, all the one as different parts. So I mean, like as, as Matt said, you could close this one off. Mm -hmm. So you could do an interview study and you could do an interview study and a focus group and kind of combine them mm -hmm. into something and you could add a third part. So mm -hmm. that is kind of like something that I've thought about that you can cut this off shorter if you need. And if you have the time, you can kind of continue. It. And also our common fear is that Tony Clear from New Zealand was kind of yeah. partly part of this idea. Mm -hmm. It's not part of the project where you are, but in, in reality is. Mm -hmm. And he put in a working group proposal for the Tixi. Mm -hmm. That's going to be based on the interviews here mm. and in New Zealand and in the UK. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's another way of actually working. Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Have you been in an ETXC working group before? No. Oh, that's a, such a good experience. Yeah, oh, yeah. But they, they, they haven't made decisions about the working group. No, yet, no. no, 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 no. It's yeah. just a proposal. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so yeah, this is just like a vague idea. So, yeah. Uh, can I go to the next one? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah I can try. Yeah, of course, yeah. So this is the the second part. Uh, understand students' perspectives on and use of generative AI in education. So what I was thinking about there was kind of when I read this was I got the idea of a mixed method study because like I think I, I mean this is kind of, this is of course what we want to do. Like we want to go this deep understanding of how they use and how they perceive it. But it will be a problem. Like we will still be university teachers interviewing them yeah so so uh, would you do this at Uppsala University or would you do this at other universities as well I, I would uh, propose that we're talking about uh, Uppsala University because yeah. we have so much uh, data already sort of yeah. walking around these hallways and uh, they're both students you can't call them <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I'm, right now, this is a bit of a coincidence. I'm taking a course in uh, software engineering, and normally I'm a teacher, but now I'm a student, mm -hmm. and I'm among the students developing a software engineering project from scratch. Everything is like complemented with ChatGPT, like yeah, literally yeah. writing up roles, writing up responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's so intrusive now. Like mm -hmm. I was shocked because I've only seen the teacher's perspective. Now I see the student perspective. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can pitch you really, really good oh, stu student perspectives. And I was shocked because this is for me the first time like sitting on the other side of the table. Mm -hmm. and I'm yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, there is lots of data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Students, yeah. students. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so Christina von Hauswolf, that has been in this group before. Mm -hmm. She's a man at Orleans University. Oh, okay. uh, she she wants to do the, this, yeah. the, the student thing. So, oh, yeah. so then we have another partner, and she's really good at, at uh, statistical mixing. Yeah, great, great. Yeah. yeah, and maybe you are too. No, no, no. But, but, so I'm, no. I'm, I'm not it's, a statistician mm. myself. No, I think I'm, I'm stronger at the qualitative part, but I've done some mixed mm. methods stuff before. But yeah, but I'm mostly qualitative. Yeah. But I, I just wanted to assure you that yeah. access will not be a problem when it comes to this. No. Because we have... No, no, exactly. Practice. But but what, what I think is good about including this part is because, like, we cannot be totally sure that they will be 100% honest. And okay. here, I would... here we have an anonymity. Uh, yeah. To some extent, that will maybe get us some different answers. You have a copy of this for him. So that we oh. have a chance to talk oh. to him. Oh, sorry. Okay. No, it was like one minute ago. So oh, yeah. sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, that's all right. Thank you for noticing, <laughs> Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, following up what what uh, uh, Anne just said about Christina, we actually were working together with her at NDO 
um, on a proposal last year that was doing exactly this, understanding the students' perspectives um, about generative AI, because um, now MDU is having this uh, AI initiative at Muller Dolan's university, and they are trying to integrate in one way or another. Now the guidelines are quite strictly forbidden um, the use of chat GPT in any form in, in their education, but they want to integrate. Yeah, the guidelines are like that at MDU. Um, so uh, the, the idea of the proposal that we were writing, it was an internal proposal for uh, some initiatives that the university had, but it is exactly this title, <laughs> like <laughs> literally word for word. Um, so we, uh, well, uh, it was not accepted internally because they had something else running on uh, that was a bit overlapping, but uh, um, the content of it might be of interest as how we thought that we could kind of acquire that um, those perspectives and, and the idea was through participatory design. So surely there were mixed methods in there, um, but with a heavy focus on participatory design. So that might be something of interest perhaps in this particular um, stage. Yeah. Uh, so, no, no, no. Because Uppsala University has no regulation at the moment, no guidelines at no. the moment, but they are coming. Mm -hmm. So it's worth thinking about comparing if you have several universities, what guidelines do they have or not have? Yeah. And uh, are you going to get the data before or after the guidelines is out? Yeah, and I, yeah, yeah, that's I, a point, yeah. I, uh, we, uh, we had an event before this conference in Finland, Coley Calling. Mm -hmm. We had people, it was like a day of chat GPT. Mm -hmm. And I, I think one of the most interesting points that was brought up there is if chat GPT or this stuff will like increase the inequality. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's just one of like the biggest risks because yeah, yeah. maybe you have students at the university and they're going, you know, they're going to have to look together really mm -hmm. well behaved and they're going to follow the rules and they're not going to use chat GPT. And then you have other students that are that are just going to use it, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you you know you're uh, you have some students using a tool or some students that are able to pay to use a tool, yeah, yeah. and some students that don't, and just how that can affect the yeah yeah of course yeah and I mean like we, we I think at, at this symposium we had this discussion but I, I have seen that in my program of course as well that we also have that. Even if every student is using it, you see, like mm -hmm. the, the students that are kind of like they already know the program, they're already very good at it. They use chat GPT and they kind of like just fly away. They're so fast. Mm -hmm. And then the students that are kind of need some bit more time, they're also using chat GPT and they understand it even less. They are getting more behind, more behind it. So there's mm -hmm. kind of like this divide stretched even more. So and that's it's also yeah. like a Very big, big risk. That, that's what I wanted. That, that would be nice to. Yeah. I will raise uh, one concern with this yeah. topic. Yeah. You see, we're also just talking about the legality of it. So you might get some very uh, strange bias in your data. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if this is like considered like a sensitive topic, so students might not be completely honest. Yeah. For me, it was really interesting to now see it from the student perspective. Yeah. Like observations could potentially be added here, but there are yeah, ethical, yeah. ethical issues, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. You, you, yeah. From my experience, it is everywhere. Like all the students are like really. Of course, it's everywhere. Yeah. 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 So, but you might not find that in the results because students no. might be a bit like, well, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to tell you, that. especially yeah. no, the these regulations yeah. are. Yeah. I mean, so you, this... you could add, you could add more stories, but I think in this they will not say, yeah, I use the cheese. Yeah. They would not say that. You get students to say that. They, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, I, okay I yeah. I them saying All right. I, I okay. had them and they said that. No. Okay, because so. I think uh, I thought that maybe here they're more willing to say it if, if it's on a survey. Uh, mm -hmm. like a, but it's, it's almost like, like in a way you're talking about here, they are using things in your course mm -hmm. because they are supposed to. And yeah. So yeah. that's partly. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Find out. Yeah. Man, that, that should be that so well. so yeah. you, as a researcher, you might not get that access to like the students really going at it on ChatGPT because they see you as a researcher mm -hmm. and yeah, no, being issue. We had yeah. as, uh, the students in our course, uh, two, two or three of them were interviewing students, and they said that there was a difference between when they started to talk mm -hmm. and when they ended the interview. Because they admitted more and more. Mm -hmm. I, uh, yeah. I, said, oh, I don't use ChatGPT after a while. 
That was done by other students. Yeah. So that might be a, a way of. I mean, yes, I mean, you have to take this into account. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I, I got an email from a researcher in particle physics or whatever he is in, mm -hmm. in the physics department. And he's, he, he was absolutely shocked because he said that they, at his department or his division, whatever it is, they allow students to use chat GTP when they write their thesis. Who, who's that? More? No, no, no. It's, it's, a, it's a research I know from, mm -hmm. we say, particle physics or something. Mm -hmm. And he was kind of, this is crazy. Uh, can, can you give me some research that said, so tell me that you can't just say, set mm -hmm. your GTP for your thesis. And so, so I mean, there are different interpretations happening. Yeah, I mean, it's like, but also like a research kind of what where you're saying, I'm using Grammarly. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, mm -hmm. That's typically seen as quite okay. Mm -hmm. You go into the language uh, support center, is definitely seen as okay. Mm -hmm. um, yes, shut GPT adds another level. <laughs> no, yeah. it, it, it's kind of a continuum. It, it is, yeah. and, and the, the nine students that our students interviewed, mm -hmm. they were very, I think, very Ianega, united what is uh, cheating. Mm -hmm. yeah. They said, if I let Chat GPT write a whole text and just copy it, mm -hmm. then it is cheating. Yeah. Or a whole code. But if, yeah, and then, it, so they had very strong ideas what the proceeding. Yeah, yeah. No, so, yeah. I mean, I don't, it doesn't mean that they didn't let Chat GPT write. Yeah, I mean, like, and there's also like this, this language or that you can kind of like pay to, but like, uh, usually, like, we had that, that old PhD thesis before they were going to be can be published, we had to use a, a language service that someone that did a grammar check. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can get, yeah, you get quite a lot of comments from, from that. Uh, you can ask an English question, but I think we get a grammar check. I don't think we have that here. Oh, you know that, okay. Uh, it, it was like, I think it was, everyone had to have it. Yeah, you had to use the mix with yours, if I remember correctly. So I mean, like, that could maybe be seen as something similar as kind of like yeah. giving it to an AI to kind of like, can you fix my language? Can you suggest a, a more formal way of writing or something like that? So yeah, so yeah, I, I um, there are some yeah, it's really gray areas there. Yeah. Yeah. So so it sounds like you're going to explore a student's understanding of plagiarism as a necessary subproduct of this study. It's going to be that yeah, I mean, yeah. you can't yeah. avoid it. No, exactly. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's going to be part of its yeah for sure. For, Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, yeah, I think that like that part, I mean, like, it, it, it will probably be difficult to avoid it. I think that it, that is something that it will probably move into. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The last one. Mm -hmm. Not the last slide, but the last third. <laughs> so, explore teaching methods using Gen AI. So, what I was thinking here when I read this was uh, action research. And uh, it doesn't have to be it, but, but that was kind of like where my mind went. And I used this kind of like, this uh, quite common model for action research, like this uh, iterative process. So like some planning stage, you could, for example, I think a, a good idea for like a, maybe a first study here would be some kind of like literature review. You could do that. Mm -hmm. uh, because at the moment, uh, they're like, like if you look at ResearchGate or Google Scholar, I mean, it's exploding with different kind of like uses of generative AI in, in teaching it in the teaching. So there wouldn't be no problem at finding enough articles on this. Uh, a second step, I mean, like, at, at least I think so. Uh, I, I think it would be possible that to kind of like collect a couple of uh, higher education teachers that would like to participate in kind of some kind of like, instead of focus group, you could do some kind of like workshop. Like how can we use generative AI? What are the strengths and weaknesses and stuff like that? Um, at least at University of Yale, this has been something that a lot of teachers have been asking for. So I, I'm, my guess is that that is the same thing at, the, at other universities mm -hmm. as well. So I think this is a good opportunity to also put data on it. Uh, so that could could be like a second study, like for, that could be the action part. And then of course some kind of like analysis of the of the findings, do some conclusions, and kind of if necessary. Keep on going. 
Yeah. <laughs> I try not to either. No, I didn't. I'll send her like it. I like it. So, yeah. uh, uh, professor, how do you say that? I'm just looking, so no hands. No, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, You mentioned your conference before, the oh, yeah. online one. Would yeah. that be a chance to have like an online workshop where you get people to get yeah. like, first data collection? Because I don't think you would need ethical approval for that kind no. of session and data collection, just their concerns. Yeah, I mean, like there, there are many different things that we could do here that, that I think would be really fun. So one thing that I had tried before, like also to get like this uh, a more um, anonymity in it. Mm -hmm. So one thing that we tried before in a different kind of study that, that we, we investigated researchers kind of like perceptions of uh, un, uh, qualitative analytical uh, methods. So we looked at the mathematical analysis and content analysis and how, how they perceive that, the differences and the strengths and, the strengths and weaknesses and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And what we used then was we did a workshop and then we had a Padlet connected mm -hmm. to that. So we collect the data via that. So it was kind of like an interaction in the Padlet. So the Padlet consists of the, kind of like the data. Uh, so yeah, I, I think there was a, a bit of a maybe innovative way of using it. Some people, uh, I would be sure, I'm sure, do, do not like that <laughs> because like you don't know how many people of the ones that were there were, did actually participate in the Padlet because it, uh, it's anonymous. So you don't know. We had like, I think it was like almost 100 participants. We don't know that all of these hundred wrote in the palette. Mm -hmm. We can know that for sure, and that can be seen as a weakness in that kind of like data collection. But at least, I mean, they all have the opportunity to participate, and uh, and it's very anonymous. Uh, so that is of course a strength with that kind of mm -hmm. doing it like that. Yeah. So I have I have started to read a little bit into it because huh? of the proposal that we have invited you to, and so where's the idea? Yeah. has guidelines, I think, for AI in education. And EU has guidelines for oh. ethics, I think, and AI in education. Mm -hmm. So they are this important document yeah. that they, so I think OECD has yeah. recommended all countries to you know, include AI in the in compulsory school and so on. Oh, yeah. So these are an, an interesting document to look into. So not, not like a single research. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that could be, you could you could probably add something about, about like a document study connected to the yeah. planning stage. Yeah, 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 that would be a good idea. Yeah. So see what I've written. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, So just some just like like a first thought that I got when I I, I did when I saw this. So yeah, but one possibility open for change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, sorry. And you asked like how will all this connect together? How will we do all this? Uh, so my idea is that I think these three, these three parts should uh, go in parallel. You should not, I don't think that you should do one first and then do that, do a case study on that. And then, uh, because like, I think this is something that, because like data collection uh, is something that you sometimes have to wait for. So it's good to have different things in parallel. So I think like these three can, can move on at the, at the same time. And if you get to this stage in all of them, um, as a, a bit ambitious, like if we have all like a case study and an action research, maybe not. But what we have the possibility here is, let's say that we only have the time to kind of like get to the middle part here, then we can like connect all of them and do like a case study of something like going over all these two. So we can connect like the teachers or the teaching practices, the students' perspectives and like the end industry. We can get some knowledge by combining all of these three. So that is something that they have a possibility if they move in parallel. So that would be, yeah, my suggestion. Yeah. So I think for all three projects, but for some to a greater extent, you would need ethical approval. And uh, I think that that could be a bit of a, a struggle at first because you're waiting for the review board. I don't know. What the yeah, it's it's already already extreme. Extreme. Ethical approval for the first, the one we did, uh, industry. Oh, so we have uh, okay. So okay. that is good. Then you can get started. But it would be annoying if you. Have to... I mean, this is also connected to us as. Uh... But what, what did you need an improvement on? Just, just curious, curious. Yeah. Well, we kind of. I mean, ethical approval. Today, you really, whenever you are interviewing anyone, you are in danger of getting personal. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then you also. Yeah, to kind of it's it's been a really big thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think in the whole university, and, uh, and also we are 
partly this is going to be part of this collaboration with New Zealand and mm. and UK. So you have that as well. So I'm talking yeah. to the legal right. office here third, and third data party transfers. Yeah, yeah. Oh. data party. <laughs> so I think partly you are but you need to kind of make sure that you you connect connect the data in a way and you have it, have it very safe in some sense and then you kind of anonymize it or save the anonymize it is what they call i think mm -hmm. so and that's something we could share between us and if you're going to have a working group you probably also need to kind of share some data yeah. that's in for all practical purposes, is not personal data, mm. but there might be a connection between that data. There might be a way to get hold of you. You, you did the interview with person X, yeah. uh, and that makes it at least something you need to have checked. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we've been checking, and we are working on getting an agreement with the. Uh, um, partners in New Zealand and, and UK. Mm. Uh, so but that's on the way. So oh, yeah. that's a, and yeah. we can do the the ones in Sweden we, that's okay already. Mm. Yeah. I have one uh, concern. It's about the student collection data because you're now working on a topic that could potentially put the student mm. at risk because if they admit to using a tool that the university does not allow or mm. like is then yeah. you're Kind of in a way collecting. Yes, yeah, no, we, we haven't got to that part yet. But no, we, and that's we, not we sensitive need... data. Mm. Yeah. It, 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 sensitive data is a very specific thing. Yeah, but I mean, sensitive data is also a data that can be used, like, and can put someone at risk. Mm -hmm. No, that's that's. I don't think it's call it sensitive it's data, not... but I do think it's part of the ethical approval it's... process yeah. that you don't put them at yeah. risk. Sensitive so... data is very well defined. Yeah. Yeah. If someone cheated on a thing, that's like, you know, that's. But get in trouble for it, but I mean, I think it's sensitive. I will check. You can go for it. Yeah, you can go. I'd love to see. So you don't necessarily need ethical approval for doing uh, uh, interviews either. No. No, I mean, uh, no. No. no, no. But I, no, I mean, but that, uh, when you have data from several countries, I would certainly do yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. to be on the safe side. Right. But otherwise, if, if you just do it here, I don't think. But that's weird. Yeah, you're, you're right. right. You're right on the you're right on the concept, I think, but not on the terminology. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and then you also have this like I don't know what's going on, but the extra quid side of this stuff. Yeah, that as well. Like you have sensitive right. data and you have extra quid side of this. It's, it's, it's yeah. something like that. Ex extra I don't personal. Know. But it, that's yeah. like if you have a protect. Is that if you have a protected identity? No, no. It, it's like the level below. So, so like sensitive data, that, that, that's something that you have to be really careful about. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, like uh, mm -hmm. religion and I mean like uh, yeah. union and stuff like that. But then there are some things that are extra. Yeah, extra quid svara. They are not sensitive, so, but they're yeah. closely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's it's more sensitive than personal data. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I think like because personal data is. That's voices, for example. I, I think the, the ethical concern here is not so much about the data category. The ethical concern is like a student is revealing information about themselves, which mm -hmm. could potentially be harmful. But I mean, so it, depends is not harm, like, it depends on the university stance. Like, no, I mean, no, no, but, but it, it, they follow the as uh, VR and some agencies have put up national rules for. That defines this. Yeah. But also, like you, when you apply, you also describe how what you're going to do with the data. Mm -hmm. So, but yes, you have this is you can't just do it. You know? mm -hmm. I, I think the only thing like related to that would be if you're doing an interview and then like a student says that they've been like subject to like harassment or violence, mm -hmm. and then you have, maybe have some obligation as a state employee to report it. I think it's only. I think it's. I think that's the closest that you get. Yeah. And mm. uh, if if you interview students about how they use chat GPT and they say, by the way, I'm Muslim, <laughs> then it, you don't. I mean, you didn't ask about that. So so we uh, we ask these people from the ethical committee. Then they say, well, it's not a problem. You erase that piece of mm. of, of information just mm. if they happen to say something. Uh, in this category, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. but it's uh, just to get back to where we came from. It's good that you can get started when you get started. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that is the. So, so can you 
Can you say again very quickly oh, one two three yeah. R's? Because I, I was thinking about something that I thought was missing here. But I can't remember what so one two three. Can you say what, what uh, about some short about what, what the study sorry? Hmm. Yeah, so the one the first one was uh, that was on um, was that on students? Yeah, but that's uh, yeah, oh, yeah, but that, yeah, the use and use in industry and professionals. The second one was students, yeah, students' per perceptions and use, and the third one was teaching methods using the NI, the NI, the NI, the NI, I think. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So this is like from so, from about what what yeah. so, must so, then an author also. And also what like, what we did ask, I mean we we did describe a three year project. That's good. Okay. And. Uh, mm. And then they say, oh, we're going to give you two years, and then uh, if things go fine, we we'll give you a, a third year. Mm -hmm. And uh, and because I what I did was describe we're doing one, two, and three more or less separately in some sense. Mm -hmm. uh, that's for two years. In the third year is where we do the um, analysis, the coming up with guidelines, coming up with conclusions that yeah. kind of connect the, the three. I have slide But that. that's, uh, um, we're not promising that. I know, of course. So yeah, I know, I know. That's the point, I mean, yeah, yeah. in a way. And, and But I think, um, and yes, we will start with the professionals um, because that's where we already have this collaboration with yeah. them and, and, and things are prepared. Um, but I fully agree that it's, uh, it's a moving target, and, and mm -hmm. you can't just okay now we know what the industry is like. Yeah, and I mean that's definitely gonna like by the time you start, mm -hmm. it will maybe be different by the time you finish, mm -hmm. especially at the industry, because I think mm -hmm. I think a lot of the industry now it's they're just like no, yeah. like mm -hmm. it's too yeah. new. But I think the point here that makes us a little bit different than other things. I mean, looking at what what the students do and, and the teachers, that's gonna happen a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think. To connect what we do to competences in the industry is probably not going to be a common thing. So mm -hmm. I think that would mm -hmm. that's yeah. what makes it stick out a bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a and also kind okay. of connect to what should we be doing yeah. as teachers, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and then knowing. How do students actually behave? Yeah, exactly. Because I sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt, Professor Anna. But I think you said you have one more slide. Is that correct? Because we have like five minutes. Okay. Like, oh, you want to feel like you are finished your presentation? Yeah. <laughs> if you want to see it, I mean, like, yeah, yeah. To see it. Well, actually, I think it's two slides. But I can I, yeah, one yeah. slide is not that important. Yeah. So. Uh, I think this one I can just skip because, like, if, no, if no, someone no. would ask, this is more like if someone would ask, well, okay, so what do we have any ideas for some theories that we maybe could use? I just kind of I took up some here that I think is well, I, yeah, yeah, but I think you, it's, no, you, you didn't want to skip this. One. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like <laughs> this this was an important thing. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. So, that was so fun, <laughs> and I had I have not added it after I had your presentation, so it was there before. But I mean, like I think like the ones here. They are a bit more like for fun. You could use them. Mm -hmm. I think like the one on the top is maybe more uh, applicable. You could do some uh, some other ones as well. But affordances, I mean, like, that is a quite easy one to use. I mean, like go for action, action possibilities with with AI, generative AI, and the constraints of can it use them. Kind of like a, yeah, mental models. You can use use that as well. So. I, I think you need to present affordances here because I'm not very familiar with it. I think I've I, I yeah, 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 I have. I have done. You said yeah, so. You should have missed your professor. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you could have heard about but, the yes, yeah, yeah. Well, Do you want to have a, a short like? Do you know about it? Or... No, I'm not very familiar okay. with it. I mean, I, I've read papers that talk about it, but I, I'm not very familiar with that theory. Yeah, just uh, like the elevator page of what you call it. Uh, like, yeah. so, yes. yeah, so, uh, I mean, like, uh, coined by, by Gibson in psychology, uh, developed by several, several persons, but uh, Donald Norman was a human computer interaction uh, professor, uh, and he kind of like took this another direction, kind of like how it can be used in design. Uh, mm -hmm. 
And so what it's mainly say is that the, we can we can do stuff with things. And what we can do are action possibilities, <laughs> and there are things we cannot do with things or are difficult to do, or that we don't want to do, and those are constraints. So yeah, that's a very short I, I like that. We can do stuff with things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah, very short. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. But yeah. But this slide looked good. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like the, yeah. the top ones, I don't think they are that strange. I mean, adult learning um, andragogy, but knows it could potentially be used mm -hmm. both for student perspective, but maybe more uh, on if the if you want to do later some kind of like professional development uh, uh, for more connected to the industry, uh, you could use that one. Uh, constructionism by pop, but I mean, like very famously used for programming, but among children. It has kind of been developed also to be used by around all the students. And Poppet also did do some kind of papers connecting this to artificial uh, artificial intelligence. So is that constructionism? Yeah, it's not yeah. constructivism. No, exactly. It's it's kind of like yeah. a yeah, it's a further development of that. Phenomenography? Phenomenology. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and these ones are more for fun. I mean uh, community yeah, practice would be fun to use uh, if you do some kind of like uh, focus group or something like that. Uh, cognitive load theory and flow theory, some, some theories that I kind of like connect quite often to when I do game design and stuff like that. So uh, if we're going more on that, in, in that direction, in some study doing some, developing something, that could be a fun thing to use. So yeah, just very shortly. And uh, yeah, this was the one, the last one, how to connect all this in, in maybe year three. So some things that I think that, that could be done. Uh, AI literacy is a really, uh, really big uh, concept right now. So in AI literacy framework, that kind of like ties everything this together, like uh, the student perceptions, uh, teaching methodologies, and uh, the the use and. Uh, in, in Do industry. you mean that you should create one, or that you use one existing? We could use. We could create one. Yeah, I think that all the findings. Yes, yeah. su suggestions for. Yeah. You know, out there, like yeah. I when I read. Yeah, it. because yeah, because like we have probably needs to be developed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and we will have a lot of data so uh, from different sources. So I think yeah, we have a good a good starting point to, to to create a really robust AI literacy framework. I think um, course development, of course, um, both for for computer science students, but also for professional development, lifelong learning. A lot of people have to learn about generative AI, and these are like the things that I would like to do. <laughs> Maybe not described in the project, but I, this is something that if it's possible. Uh, some kind of like development, and this will could be connected to like courses or learning. Like everyone maybe will not be able to take courses, but maybe they can learn about generative AI in another way. So we can develop game sites. Uh, this here, I was thinking more like in the line of if you know about the Moral Machine Project at uh, MIT. So it's uh, the trolley problem. Uh, so it's a game where you kind of like have to decide who dies when a self-driving car comes along. And by doing this, by playing this game, they, they collect data and they can do really fun statistics on how how people's morality are over the world and uh, depending on what the and gender, the age group. And, and the results are terrifying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can see it. Because it's yeah. like you have a bias against bad people. Yeah, exactly. And, and all and people, and, uh, yeah, and dogs and cats and everything. Yeah, so yeah. So you could do something like that uh, later to the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> and look what's yeah references and then then yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what are I was thinking about? Did I make it in time? Do you have you like almost a minute? Do, do you have like uh, some ethical aspect or security aspect of inside this? Inside. Do, uh, well, when you it? when you ask, for example, when you interview teachers and students and anyone on earth, it would be interesting to to know what people think about ethical issues about. Mm. Yeah, like, because oh, yeah. For, for example, I have a son who works for Google. Mm. I can't imagine that they would allow their programmers mm. to upload Google code mm. to check no, no, yeah. even, even talk code. about stuff yeah. mm -hmm. that yeah. Google is working on, like just that. No, no, no. So I, I think the issues are very different in school because here we have the main thing is we want them to learn. Yeah. But companies have, you know, mm. don't tell anyone about it. So, yeah. so it would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that yeah, I think that should be. Ethical yeah. things. Also, what is the 
So the first uh, part is about the IT industry. What is the IT industry? It's massive. Who are you mm -hmm. going to access? Like, yeah, yeah, no. yes, yeah. we've been trying to report it. It's about um, getting enough. Yeah, that, that's one problem. Another thing yeah. that we've been talking about companies are what enough people to interview. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're still. It's not like everyone's going to say, yeah, I can. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I, don't know. I mean, those, those interviews could be technically very short if most of the people, if you talk oh, to 10 but, uh, companies and they say, we're not allowed to use it. Mm -hmm. That's a good result. Mm -hmm. That's where it is now. Yeah, but uh, now we're looking into the some of the, the software industry where they actually make categorization of people. So we are trying to see if we could get enough people in different categories. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and uh, so because category? we don't well I mean the categories I don't remember now but uh, manage, it manage it's it's more more into this, uh, so you, you have you will do some deductive analysis on ready-made categories if that right well and I mean if you, yes you're gonna kind of look at the uh, I mean if you have senior developers if you have yeah. senior oh, developers I see. Yeah. Uh, oh, the CIA and things like that There's Sophia. The SFIA, they are an organization that sort of work on how to describe organizations. But also, yes, exactly, because mm -hmm. I have in my software engineering course someone who works in medtech, and you have one guy who's working in uh, fintech, and uh, mm -hmm. you have all the IT industry is not one thing. Mm -hmm. right? yeah, so you need so to make sure that you get a representative sample yeah. in that regard. Yes, and also we want to try to get at least kind of enough in each category yes and of course yeah. i mean you as you say i mean it's a huge thing and if you talk even if we talk about getting 20 interviews in sweden 20 in new zealand 20 in, uh, uh, in, in aberdeen or in uk that's quite a lot for an interview study yeah. Yeah. but it's still oh, yes. it's not no it's a let's check well. gdp categorizes <laughs> that, yeah. that would be fun apparently yeah. apparently and Vivo is very good at doing that yeah like you i do not the third dimension so the boy and Vivo already does yeah. this oh, yeah. Yeah. automatic yeah. categorization oh wow. so cool yeah and, and it's also uh, again it's a changing um situation it's like when um uh, was here the first time in September. We said that they are not allowed to use anything like this to categorize their data. When we I met her in uh be Kohli or something, it's changed. So they yeah. they are allowed to use it to get started with their categorization. And it's so much faster. I mean, and she was saying, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, she still kind of had to add her own sort of competence to it. I mean, I think it's the same thing we said, yeah. but uh, if you know something about programming, you can fly. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't, you, you can uh, don't get anywhere. Um, and you, don't, you, don't, you don't get the quality. Yeah. But That's for someone who has the competence, this is making it so much faster. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so they, in a couple of months, policy changed. Uh, yeah. And and uh, so so in 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 the project where you will be <laughs> if we get the funding, we talked about it, that that is AI in school. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about a, a three or four year pro project that we we ask the same question every, every year and see how it develops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, because it mean, changes so fast. You know? Yeah. Because how do we deal with <laughs> Something like that. In in a way, Niklas will be fully funded by this project. Oh, but I, that, I mean that's one of the issues with being a postdoc. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and nice it's not going to be a square staff. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. if you talk about being a major part, bringing in money and something, yeah, sure. then we need to discuss it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, being part of Ericsson. I don't know if this was for the same, right? No. I feel like we know we so. Uh, uh, it's, um, so it's um, full time except for teaching. You're not allowed to extend it in different ways to get it. Oh, it's, it's a very 
like from the administrative part, then it's very strict. But it's not impossible. So you know, I, I think everything do. is worth exploring. It's also like practically impossible. <laughs> I think you have a, is it three or four years? As a temporary thing? No, it's a postdoc. Can you be postdoc more than three years? No, so you're two years, then you can extend it to three, and then mm -hmm. you can be hired as a researcher for one year. <laughs> and that is the top four years you can yeah. be total. So that's sort of where you can, that, that's one, because I'm pretty sure we will get three years from this. I mean, and, but if we sort of get extra money coming in, then we could probably, yeah. so, as you say, come in, make it a, a year as a researcher. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that you can't, so the, the difficulty is that you can't say now, okay, we have this extra money, so it will be four years. Mm -hmm. You have to bring the money the fourth year. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I had a similar situation. And they yeah, yeah. But Max, so you will apply for a funding, but isn't this a project that I'm supposed to be in? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> this is not the, we talked about it, the, the continuation of the, the students, the search students. No, no, like I say, I mean, I think I, I mean, we have I this project is sort of the ones that we sent to the um, the pop group and then uh, George. Yeah, yeah, and yes, then. his project. Yes, yeah. that's fine. Yes, I know that's and the sound of that. Your yeah. project. Uh, so, so I, 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 I thought you were talking about planning to find me someone else. Yeah, no, I was talking about uh, there might be an issue of involving Nicholas officially yeah, doing yeah. something yeah. else. I yeah. mean, yeah. And I think if you look at things here, um, students could definitely be expanded into not just high, higher education students. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I, I think we've been careful not to kind of promise too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But I'm I'm starting to fade a little bit, so I'm I'll yeah. I'll excuse myself, but I'll I'll still be here down the hall. If